Jewish people could not look at Paul and go, I don't know, what about this 611th command you have here? You might have missed that. No. If it's about the law, I make it. If it's about my fervency for following the law, I still make it. If, if, if all the text that, that was given to us, I have every right to stand in front of that God and go, I did all these. I accomplished all that. And then Paul goes, that's not the intent of what the law was for, even though I did it. And he gets ready to... Which is similar to what he says in, in that um, uh, 22nd and 23rd chapter of, of Acts. Now he's been arrested and he yeah. has to make his tries to make his defense in front of the mob the he then was, he makes yep, his about, defense yeah. in front of the, the Sanhedrin yep. and he goes into his, this not for exactly the same reason but he goes into it to establish his pedigree right. to say I have to, never mind if I have the right to stand before God in, in the afterlife I have the right to stand before you guys right. and talk to you maybe even lecture you Right. Because I have walked in that right. that path, I have followed that right. path. So he he comes back to that, yeah. you know, a couple of times. But as as we say here, as yeah. soon as he comes back to it and establishes, yeah. builds the whole house of cards, he's gonna throw it away. He throws it away. Yeah. And the thing with with him standing in front of the, at the trial, he's like, "There's nothing you can say that I already don't know." Yeah. Because I used to be you. Yeah. I, I was. I was the chief of the chief. I was the number one guy. So there's nothing you can tell me. You're picking up something that has nothing to do with what our traditions and our law says. And you're trying to accuse me of something that has nothing to do with it. So let me defend myself from your perspective. And then I'm bringing my God in to defend me. And it was like, they, they just like with Jesus. Yeah. We got this against you, but it ain't really in our laws to hold it against you. But we just don't like what you're doing. So we're just going to figure out a way to trap you. And they couldn't trap him or Jesus. Or Stephen. Yeah, they couldn't trap Stephen. Stephen is another one that comes out. And, and the whole, that, that yeah. whole almost chapter yeah. is just him recounting Old yeah. Testament history to say, I agree with each of these events. Here's yeah. what happened to yeah. our people. I'm Greek, granted, I'm Greek. Yeah. But nonetheless, here's yeah. what happened to our Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And here's the gospel that I want to tell you. Yeah. And, and, of course, that that doesn't last for too long. But they yeah. listened to him up to that right. point. Yeah. And it always fascinated me with Stephen. Because who was holding the coat? I know. I know. Paul was there. Yeah. Paul, Paul wound up on the other side of that mirror. Paul was there. He was standing there holding the coat. Let me hold your coat. You guys go ahead and stone him. He wasn't even Paul. Saying. He was Saul back he then. Was he Saul. Was, yeah, he was right he on was, the ground so floor. He saw Stephen being stoned. We don't know how much of the event when Stephen says forgive them that he heard or didn't hear. We don't know how much of the event if he saw the heavens open and Jesus receiving them. We don't know. But we do know that he saw someone being brutally murdered and saw how a follower of Christ took that. Which if you look at his life, he eventually picks up that mantle. Because the times he was beaten, shipwrecked, stoned. Wild beasts. Yeah, wild everything. Yes. He, you can see what he did. He went like Stephen. And remember last week we talked about, you know, when he would when he would get that stuff and they would left him for dead sometimes, he would go, get back up, put his clothes on, go right back in and say, I dare you to do it to me again. Here's what Jesus said. And, and that fascinated me. You, you know, you're on beat half to death. Once they're gone and they're done beating you, you recover. The Holy Spirit helps you recover. Or you recover and you get your clothes back on and go right in the same day most times and start doing the exact same thing that they drug you out and beat you for. I mean, what do you do to a person that says, kill me, I don't care. Stone me to death, I don't care, I'm coming back. I'm going to present the gospel until, that last, until the Father keeps my last breath and I'm with him forever. And, you know what? I know you can't kill me because the Holy Spirit told me I'm going to stand before Caesar one day and I ain't stood before Caesar, so there's nothing you can do to me anyway. Because if you do kill me, God's going to raise me up again and send me again. And there is some speculation that that may happen one or two of the times with the Stonings. Because the way the wording is, it possibly said he was laid for dead. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's fascinating what Paul's going through. You wonder what that talk with Ananias must have been like when God sends Ananias to him and says, 
you know, to tell him 